In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to The Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to The Deal Board Podcast. And we have a great episode for you today. Because we are talking about the current economy and what's going on in the business sale market, much like what's going on in the real estate market, prices are up, inventory down, valuations up. And we wanted to dive into that because it is significant. And now that the first quarter numbers are coming out, we're seeing trends that we've never seen before in 25 years. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy year. I mean, even 2020, we had a really strong year. And moving into 2021, we're seeing, like you said, Andy, some some reduction in the inventory and increase in buyer activity that we think is driving this. Um, Biz by Sell releases a really great insights report every quarter. So that's the, that's the, some of the numbers that we're going to reference today. And they've been great partners for us. But looking at the size of businesses that are selling, um, revenue multiples rose by 5% um, quarter over quarter from last year. And the cash flow multiples, which is that seller's discretionary earnings that we've talked about related to valuations in the show, is also up um, 7%. And the median sales price, this is a big one. So like the average sale price of a business rose by 30% year over year. And that's, that's very, very significant. Yeah, we're seeing the same thing in Florida. And so I'll I'll talk about a a Wall Street Journal article that came out earlier, but it did say that Florida was kind of the hotbed of this activity. It was funny because the Sun Sentinel just came out with an article about how the 2020 census said that we lost population over the last 10 years, which is incredibly hard to believe. Maybe they haven't quite caught up yet. Because I'll tell you the traffic down here and the stories uh, anecdotally of people moving down here is is, is incredible. But so I'm getting these statistics from the Business Brokers of Florida, which is our organization that we're involved in. So here's some of the sold statistics that we have so far this quarter. First quarter, the average value was $650,000 compared to to the same time last year. $304,000. At $304,000. I mean, that's wow. over double the value. Now, this and this isn't one or two sales that are skewing the numbers. What we're seeing it is, and I'll pull up some of the uh, Transworld statistics. I got the papers right here uh, for, for quote unquote radio. I'm shuffling the papers so you can hear it. But, you know, we, I'm just inundated in papers because it's incredible, these statistics. Yeah, it's crazy. Actually, in Biz by Sell's uh, insight report too, one of their their leading headlines is Florida emerges as the new hot spot for buying a business, and it is interesting because we see the the migration patterns definitely influence the business sale market. So, th- so they were seeing you know some more outbound migration in California and New York, and some inbound in Florida and Texas. But for some reason, Texas hasn't exploded as much as Florida has. Um, it's just been really crazy. So, but we've seen, you know, multiples on seller's discretionary earnings are up, um, multiples on revenue are up. We are seeing um, slightly some longer times to sell, but that's also influenced by a lot of people are using these bank financing um, tools through the SBA and some of the incentives the government's created. So it, it's, I don't think, I mean, I know in my career, I haven't seen a market like this. And it looks like in 2021 for the rest of the outlook for the year that we're going to continue to see these trends. Yeah. And then I was quoting some of the sold statistics. Here's some of the listing statistics we have at Trans World right now. Now, inventory is still down, but we're both seeing that come back, right? So right. over the last few months, our listing numbers have almost returned to pre-pandemic, not quite there. Probably we're about an 85% of where we were uh, in Florida. And we're seeing that across the board of trans world. We are starting to get back up there uh, to where we were. Uh, you know, system-wide, we were doing about three or four, 300 or so listings a month in the high 200s. We dipped down under 200. Now we're back up to about 250. So we're we're getting there in locally. Um, just here's a couple more statistics. Average list price, 
up 17% this year so far. Average revenue only up 3%. So you're seeing that people are pricing their businesses higher than they were. Uh, the average SDE is up 9%. So some of these businesses are making more money. Average list price just quarter to quarter from last year. So this was comparing it to all of last year. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to compare it to quarter to quarter, which if you remember, the first quarter really wasn't the pandemic yet. Um, we're up 20, uh, the list price is up 31% from last year. I mean, 31%. Yeah. And if you do Q2, now maybe that's a bad comparison because Q2 last year, we were knee deep. Yeah. Enclosures were knee deep and things. And our, our listings kind of, and we saw that across the board kind of tanked, but the listing price compared to last year is up 46%. It's crazy. Yeah, it's going to be hard. I don't think Q2 comparisons are, are really going to be valid just based on what, what happened in our industry, at least in Q2. I know a lot of businesses suffered, but it really just came to a screeching halt in terms of listing businesses for sale. The businesses we were listing for sale really were distressed. Um, so that that's going to be hard comparison, but it, it, like all these statistics. And if you look at biz by sales, like, you know, small business financial health index, that's like the revenues are up, the cash flows up, which means the net profits up all indications are that the small businesses really didn't suffer as much as all of us thought they would through the pandemic. Yeah. The wall street journal had an article, uh, April 16th. And they were talking just about that, that the federal statistics came out and the federal economists suggested that small business failures due to Corona pandemic were far fewer than expected. Now it was about 200,000 more uh, than usual. Now, usually in recent years, about 600,000 establishments closed per year. So we had 800,000 last year, but they were expecting a bloodbath. I mean, yeah. at one point, they were talking about 40, 50% of restaurants not reopening. And yeah. that has not been the case. No. And I think, look, there's a lot of things that we can point to. We've seen through our clients and our, our, our the stories we've seen, we've seen a lot of innovative entrepreneurs over the last year. We've seen a lot of people do things that we talked about. I think we actually, we did a, an episode right when the pandemic hit of seven things you could do to increase, you know, your profitability and survive through the pandemic. And we saw a lot of people cut expenses and get lean, but we also saw a lot of government incentives that at the end of the day worked. I mean, now that we're seeing these results. Yeah. They, they, I think they learned from 2009 and 2010 that throwing money into the economy works. So they did it again with PPP and the first round of PPP might've gotten sucked up pretty quickly by people. And I don't know if they ever really exhausted it, but certainly people that didn't deserve it, quote unquote, didn't. So they came out with another round uh, for people who were really hurt. And you saw the most hardly impacted uh, businesses like uh, personal services, like hair salons and maybe some of the gyms because they couldn't have people back in, inside the gyms. But I think for the most part, it worked. And you are seeing that now. Now, I'll tell you, if you got a second round of PPP, since they don't have the mechanism for forgiving them yet, when you go to sell your business, it gets a little complicated. And we're seeing that now. Yeah. Yeah. We, we could actually do a show on, maybe this is a new show idea, just the transition with PPP. And if you got idle loans and how that all works, um, we're, we were learning as we went to last year, but we've got a really good handle on it now. But we saw, I mean, look in the service industries, salons, restaurants, we saw these PPP idle loans, idle grants really help businesses that were hurt last year. But we also saw saw them where some businesses weren't sure if they were going to get hurt or they needed it, but they took it anyway, make sure they can maintain their payroll. They're actually able to grow and hire. And I think that's where we're seeing some of these revenue increases, some of these cash flow increases. I mean, we we mentioned at the top that our buyer pool is bigger than we've ever seen. And part of that reason we're seeing in our office is there's more strategic buyers. So there's more businesses buying other businesses, um, which traditionally hasn't been a big 
segment of our buyer market, but there's a lot of growing through acquisition happening right now. Maybe that's attributed to our podcast too, Andy, who knows? I mean, but <laughs> I hope <laughs> so. A little, we, little you know, piece. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we certainly have a lot of buyers that come to us and a lot of uh, advisors that listen. And we want to thank you all for uh, being fans because it is getting the word out there. And I think uh, a lot of people enjoy the podcast and enjoy, enjoy the subject matter. And you're right. I mean, the businesses, you know, suffered last year for sure, but so many of them were able to sock away money, save money on travel, save money on client acquisition, because perhaps, you know, their competitors went out of business and or they just were able to focus on advertising uh, that were, you know, we knew where everybody was. They were home. They yeah. weren't on the road. <laughs> We didn't have to, you know, you, you could kind of target your advertising and they were on their computers. So we saw the ability for people to really target their, their markets. And yes, we saw some restaurants. Uh, we keep using that example, but yep. we saw some restaurants that did really well with takeout, people pivoting. We talked about it a couple of podcasts ago about some of the business whiplash that people are going to have to figure out, like what business are we in now? Uh, but again, everything points to, you know, things roaring back. And if, if, if Florida happens to be kind of a bellwether of what's going to happen, I will tell you that the releasing of the restrictions here is in full force. The restaurants are completely packed. I couldn't even think about getting a Mother's Day uh, brunch going uh, to get reservations, completely booked, went out to dinner the night before with my, uh, my mom. So, I, I think what we're going to continue to see is uh, small businesses thrive. Our market continue to be active where buyers have to be aggressive. Yeah. So I was going to say, so, you know, if you're listening to the podcast, what do all these stats mean to you? Um, let's talk about buyers first, right? So, um, you know, we talk, talk a lot about on the show that there's there's many more buyers than there are sellers, right? So we've listed some of our listing statistics on the show and, you know, we'll probably have at any given time, what do you think, Andy, a 20 to one ratio for buyers to listings at least, at least. right? At, at least. least. And some of these more profitable businesses, the businesses that qualify for SBA financing and things like that, those are even more competitive. So if you're a buyer, it's a competitive market, plain and simple. And we do have a show back, a, a probably almost a year ago now about, you know, how to win a deal if you're a buyer. We also have a, a series that we put out a few months ago. That's everything you need to know about buying a business, but you do have to be aggressive, meaning you have to move fast. You have to be willing to make an offer quickly um, and, and get that business under contract. I mean, we, I think I mentioned this on the show, some of the, the most popular industries and popular deal sizes, which are, are the larger deals we're getting multiple offers on them and the sellers are being able to interview and choose the buyer that they want. Yeah. And we just had a deal. It was about, I think it was about a $2 million deal, plumbing supply business. So very nice business. Con con construction right now is blowing up. Yes. So yep. construction supply businesses, we, we all see the reports of how much plywood costs, right? Well, just those plumbing supplies are going up too. So this business is making money hand over fist. They're selling because they're retiring. So it's like checks all the right boxes, right? We put in an offer. We happened to co-broke with another, uh, the listing agent was someone else, uh, another firm. We put in an offer, $300,000 over list. We didn't win. And so in the complaint, quote unquote, the, the, we, I talked to one of my other competitors she said she lost two. They put in a four hundred thousand uh, dollar overprice offer, and they lost. So I have no idea what this business sold for. Is that typical right now? No, I don't want to get the seller's hopes up that people are paying ridiculous prices. I mean, if you have a good business, uh, which we haven't gotten to yet, the sell side, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah. So. Wrap it up, buyers. If you are in the market and you need to be aggressive, you need to move fast, you need to be decisive. We're not saying make a bad decision or overpay for a business, but um, especially if it's a, a business that is highly sought after, you know, thinking it over, taking your time will probably lose you the deal. 
at this point. And if you have unrealistic expectations, I want a business that has recurring revenues. I want a business where they're retiring. I want to be, you know, you know, we always use, we always laugh and say, yeah, me too. Yeah. So um, you're going to have to be able to, you know, buy a business with some warts. Yes, exactly. So let's talk about if there, if you're a seller or poten- let's say potential seller in this market, you're thinking about retiring or exiting your current company to do something else. What do you, what do you think these numbers and these trends teach the listeners, Andy? Well, it teaches them that you know it's very hard to time the market. I just got an email from someone uh, that's in the publishing business that uh, I don't want to talk about what publishing business, but they said we should have sold last year. Uh, before the pandemic, and they should have because they had a great offer on the table, and that offer is not going to come. You know, their business is in a different place right now. So, uh, if you are making money and thinking about retiring and have a good nest egg uh, and willing to sell now, I would highly suggest you do so. Again, valuations are up, money is still in the marketplace. So, I could, we, we could. Pick out three, and the third reason is capital gains may go up. Yes, and and we haven't talked about this on that uh, on the show yet. Maybe we'll we're going that to. Now. We're going to. We just uh, are putting the show together actually right now for anyone waiting. But I mean, let's talk about the second point too. There's money in the market still. So I always tell our clients, just as important as selling for the max value is getting cash at the closing table, right? And we talk to our sellers all the time. They want to minimize seller financing, and the number one way to do that is to make sure that a bank will lend money on your acquisition to a buyer. And that's happening right now. Yes, you you know the business has to be profitable. There's boxes that it has to check for the bank, but there's lots of money in the marketplace for buyers with these acquisitions, which just means more money at the closing table, you know, for the sellers. Um, and the other thing is too. All right, say you're sitting there and you're listening to us, and you're like, oh, I'm not sure. It doesn't hurt to have a conversation with your local business brokerage advisor and just see hey, what's going on in our marketplace? What's going on in our industry? Can you take a look at my numbers and give me a real honest idea? I think that's really key. A lot of our advisors give very honest, conservative valuation opinions. You know, we're not going to paint rainbows and unicorns and and tell you something's going to happen that we don't think can happen. But a conversation costs nothing. There's nothing you're jeopardizing um, confidentiality wise, but it's, you're right, Andy, you can't time the market but right now is it's crazy. I don't think there's a better way to describe it. Yeah, because interest rates are going to have to go up. And interest rates, all interest rates are going to do because the valuations aren't going to change that much. They are changing a little bit. You could certainly get a better uh, valuation for your business than you could have at the beginning of 2019 even. But interest rates are just going to chew into the valuation that the bank's going to put on the business and the amount of money that they could leverage into the loan. So as interest rates go up, the principle of the amount that they're going to be able to finance is going to go down. You know, they're go. they have the uh, three months of free money for the buyers. Uh, you're running out of time on that, which is the guarantee fees, which is about $40,000 per million. So it's not small. That comes out of the valuation as well. So all those things uh, will, there's money in the market and the banks are still, although I, I'm starting to get the hint that some of the banks are getting more picky. Yeah, they're definitely getting picky. They're also busier. Um, you know, I mentioned in, in this, we're seeing a, a longer closing time, especially on and businesses with SBA loans. The banks are just, they're busy, right? <laughs> They've got PPP going on. Um, still, they're starting to work on forgiveness and they're busy. But there's, there's a lot of good things right now. And if you are on the fence, I think it's a good time to at least get an opinion of where you're at and think about selling. You know, another thing we tell our clients too, is that you, one thing about timing the market is you can try and grow your company. You know, you can try and grow your SD, grow your EBITDA. And if these things happen, like we're talking about interest rates, bank financing falling off the table, the ultimate price you're paid for the business might not increase, even though your, your SDE theoretically increases in the future. So just some things to think about, some statistics that we found really interesting. Obviously, we're in this business every day and tracking these numbers and trying to predict what our business is going to do. Um, and every time Andy and I get together, just the growth and the change in the, the last three, six, nine months has really even shocked us. So 
Yeah, it has. I Again, I do think it's a great time to sell your business, to think about it. If you do want to think about it, we happen to be talking. It happens to be the middle of May, which also happens to be tax time. So you're going to need to get your 2020 numbers together, have them ready because a lot of you will file for extension. It doesn't mean that you can't not have your 2020 numbers. But l- listen, the other good reason to sell right now is you're going to get a pass on 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whoever looks at your business is going to, whether it's down or whether it's up, they're going to say, eh, 2020. They'll look at 2019, but not put a lot of weight on it. If you can turn around your business now, for all the reasons we just talked about, the markets are going to be hot. People have money from from federal stimulus dollars. People are out to spend and travel. If you could grab some of that money and increase your SDE right now in the 2021 first quarter, by the time we're done talking about this, uh, second quarter numbers are rolling around. If you get good numbers to the bottom line of the beginning of 2021, you're going to, that's how you're going to be valued. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And the further we move away from 2020, we don't know how that's going to traditionally we look back at three years and, you know, two years from now or a year and a half from now, we don't know how people are going to treat 2020, but we know how they're treating 2020 today. Right. Well, I mean, all good reasons uh, to take part in this hot market. Uh, I think we, we kind of did a good job of telling everybody what's happening out there. And so I hope that everybody will take this advice and do something with it, whether calling your business broker and deciding, Hey, I want to talk to you. And I have one of these meetings tomorrow. They're not sure what they want to do, but they want to talk about it for the future and, or talking to your banker and saying, this may be a good time to grow my business. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So whether you're a buyer or seller, we hope this industry insight um, helped you. I want to thank our partners again from Biz by Sell for putting out some great data um, every quarter for us to rely upon. We do have a listing of the week and a deal of the week if you're interested in, in figuring out what is that right business for you to buy. So we'll jump into those and hope you'll join us for our next episode. Great job. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Hey, Andy, do you know what time it is? It's time for our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Sold. Hey, everybody, welcome back. And it is deal of the week. And I have a returning guest, Chip Redman from Transworld Business Advisors of Central Florida. Just did a very nice deal. Chip, give us a little bit about this deal and why it was special. How are you, Andy? Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, so for, for this deal here, this was the second purchase for a gentleman who is working on doing a roll-up in, uh, in Central Florida. He's trying to buy uh, multiple property management companies. So this was number two for us with him. And this was an addition of 37 short-term uh, homes where he can actually rent and, and do the management side. Uh, so it was a it was a big deal trying to grab some numbers for him and, and adding on to what he already has. Yeah, uh, that's what I love about it. We talk about all the time of people buying small businesses, kind of doing mini roles, trying to be their own, you know, private equity group or their family office. And I think we're going to see more and more of that as we go along, as people get smarter and learn the business. And obviously, uh, he has a great uh, partner in you going around and trying to find some more businesses. So give us a little bit of the financial details. How much did it sell for? How much was it making? Yeah, so it was originally uh, listed for 350000 and it sold for $300,000. Uh, it had a gross revenue of 857000 a year, but it really made about 150000 And where the income's coming in is both uh, being able to rent the homes and then being able to get some percentage increases off of uh, landscaping, pool cleaning, um, you know, the, the accidental uh, cleaning of the houses themselves. So he had a pretty nice... Nice income there, about one hundred fifty thousand for SDE. Yeah, so 
two times. I mean, it basically two times. sold for two times. Right? And what were the terms? This, this was a this was a, a cash deal. So cash deal. That's mm-hmm. why you got it for two times. Cash deal, right? <laughs> yeah, and we did it pretty quick. You know, he wanted to kind of make this thing. Uh, we did it in less than three weeks on this one. So we ripped through due diligence. He knew what he had going into it. Uh, the deal had fallen apart a couple times before, so we knew the pitfalls. And uh, we just, uh, we focused on what we needed to focus on. Great. Sounds like a great deal. Good deals for good people. Chip, give everybody your contact info info if they want to learn more or want to talk about Orlando and property management or any other business. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk to anybody in in Orlando and Central Florida that they want to. Uh, My cell phone number is 321-299-6867. And my email is chrisredmond at tworld.com. Thanks, Andy. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for listing of the week. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. And it is listing of the week. And I have John Fullerton of Transworld Business Advisors of Omaha. And he has a great listing. It is a franchise, and a lot of people looking for franchises these days, and this is a good one. John, welcome. Why don't you tell us about it? Thanks very much, Andy. Yeah, this is really an incredible deal. Uh, This is a top-rated franchise, one of the fastest-growing franchises. There's more than 150 locations out there already, and they've only been in business a short while, a little over a decade, maybe 15 years, that this franchise has been around. But it actually is a fast casual franchise that landed the number two ranking in its class of franchises in the Entrepreneur Magazine's top food franchises of 2019, and was also ranked number 10 on the nation's restaurant news fastest growing chains of the year, and also made Franchise Business Review's top franchises list. And it also was named one of the few on QSR's best franchise deals of the year list. So it really is a fantastic franchise that has been very successful. Everything is put together with all the policies and the procedures and uh, the mess menus and everything. Uh, and it's a uh, it's got these things on the wall that are computerized like a big tablet. I'm very impressed with this because I used to be a, ma- a restaurant manager myself. And um, But they've got everything right there on the computer, on the tablet, that tells the prep crew and all of the crew everything what to do minute by minute as they come in. So they know exactly what to do and everything is consistent and it is high quality and it's very popular. And they have a bar as well. And you do have some latitude there. You can make a, come up with your own mixes, which they've come up with some local varieties here. And it has an outdoor patio. And it's in one of these uh, areas that is definitely the high end part of town uh, out west. Uh, there's a major shopping center there, the newest one here in town. Uh, it's got a lot of really big names there in it. And it's like a, a little downtown. It's like a beautiful boutique kind of. It's not like a regular strip mall at all. It's beautiful. It's really nice. And uh, so then uh, also, you know, people typically on this, they spend a minimum of $770,000 to over a million dollars per location to build these. But things are actually a little bit better here in Omaha. You know, it's more affordable. And actually, we've got the economy that is the envy of the world and for many decades has been. Uh, we have very stable prices uh, and uh, it's very affordable, but lots of growth here in Omaha for many, many decades. It's been a, a very good financial district to invest in. And of course, there have been very many uh, other franchises that they started here because it's a perfect test market and it's a very good middle of the uh, middle of America place to be. So um, they actually this one the owners they they spent about five hundred and sixty thousand dollars on this particular location and uh, they had a family member a son who was running the business uh, but he kind of lost interest as he grew his family and had to move on to some other things. Uh, so a couple of years ago, of course, it's been around for about four years. And a couple of years ago, he moved on. They hired a manager. My honest opinion is the manager they hired really is not good because they had more than actually almost a million dollars in sales in 2019, but their net profit wasn't what it should have been, but they were profitable. And uh, so 
but yeah, there's a lot of potential to grow this with the right kind of people. There's somebody who knows how to run these franchises and own them. Actually, a serial franchise owner from around the country, this would be an ideal thing because they have a very large territory that they bought when they bought this franchise. It covers the entire Omaha Council Bluffs metro area all the way down to some small towns all around. They have the rights to build another five locations, so they'll have, you can have six of them here. And then furthermore, they actually paid for the franchise fees for the next, the second and third locations they were planning to open. So, uh, and those, that right there is a $55,000 value. And so what do you think all of that would be worth, Andy, in your humble opinion? What do you think somebody should pay for that? Well, that, that, that's a, a, a great deal and uh, sounds like a million dollar package. How much are they asking? 189. Oh $189,000. This deal will not last. Somebody needs to jump on this right away because it is actually the best deal I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's a beautiful and a wonderful place with all the policies and procedures and everything codified right there. The number one, number two in the uh, category of food that it offers, uh, but also topping the list on many different franchise organizations that monitor and publish about these things and are specialists on franchises. This is a top franchise, a fantastic deal, a great opportunity for somebody to get out here and grow this into six franchise locations throughout the Omaha metro area and make a lot of money. Sounds like a great deal. And you explained it perfectly. And for 189, that's a that's a no-brainer. So, John, what's the best way to get in touch with you if someone wants to learn more about it? Give me a call at 402-213-9945 uh, or J Fullerton, J F U L L E R T O N at T World T W O R L D dot com. Perfect. Thanks for stopping by today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for tuning into the show today. If you like the podcast, share it with your friends on social media. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcasting app. If you have questions, would like to appear, or have suggestions for topics for the show, get in contact with us through our website, thedealboardpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.